Hello YouTube, it's Mark from Spending Wages here and as you can see today's video is going to be about how to revise for exams. What I'm about to go through is how I would typically revise for an exam. Now you may have heard something similar or this could be completely new but bear with me and I'll try to put my point across as best I can. So let's get on with it. I'm going to start off by saying that there is no right or wrong way to revise for an exam because what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. When it comes to the exam itself, you are going to know a number of things. When it is, how long it is, and what is required, etc. In addition to this, your tutor may provide further guidance, and you should always have the benefit of seeing past papers. One of my latest exams was on something called Managing Finance. This was taught in a six-week window, the exam for which followed on a number of weeks after. If I remember rightly, what was taught to me roughly covered 11 or so different topics. And what I'm trying to get at here is that your revision should have a start and it should have an end because you are not going to be assessed on something that you have not been taught. Moving on, what you can see in front of you now is what I'd like you to live by when it comes to your revision. The hierarchy is applicable to any kind of exam and I will go through each of the stages in turn. But before I do that, a few words on the hierarchy. As you can see, it starts off with a revision pack, moves on to a compact pack, and finally a nutshell pack. And above that sits a matrix. On the left-hand side, there is a scale of more to less, size and time. So basically, the revision pack should be greater in size and take longer to go through than the nutshell pack. So starting with the revision pack, here are some of its characteristics. As you can see, there should be one pack per topic, and this should be based on course materials such as core readings, diagrams, lecture notes, etc. Structure this pack as you see fit. Make bold titles, theorists, dates, important statements, etc. Use size 8 font, print out single-sided and staple together. Finally, a typical revision pack covering all topics could be 40 pages of A4. So as I said before, my managing finance exam had roughly 11 topics and each of these topics will be included in the 40 pages of A4. Here's a look at my Managing Finance Revision Pack. In the end, I decided to revise seven out of the 11 topics as I was only required to answer three questions. You will see that the revision pack starts off with balance sheets and goes on to income statements. What's included here does not matter. This is just designed to give you an idea of what a revision pack should look like. As you can see, each topic is numbered and there are a number of subheadings. Things are in bold and there are lots of diagrams and models. Now there is quite a bit of detail in this pack, which is good because this is everything that I thought I needed to revise for my managing finance exam. Once the revision pack is complete, it is then up to you to start work on the compact pack. As you can see here, this is about revising the revision pack. The aim here is to reduce the number of pages, delete, reword, change structure, etc. Try not to add anything new, and the same rules apply to what to make bold, font and printing, etc. It must be pointed out that the compact pack is not made to replace the revision pack, it is simply an additional document, so you now should have two revision documents, a revision pack and a compact pack. Once you are happy with this document, this is going to be the document that takes you pretty much up to your exam. Your reference should stop here. And what I mean by that is you should only refer back to the revision pack if there is something you can't quite remember or if there is something you want to kind of go over again. Now I'm not going to show you what a compact pack looks like as it is just a smaller version of the revision pack. It is at this point that I would then like you to go ahead and build your matrix. This is a crucial piece of paper and is to be rewritten when your exam starts. It is referred to under one acronym and is numerically based. And again, it must be pointed out that this does not replace the revision compact or nutshell pack. Now I know I haven't gone through the nutshell pack as yet. I am getting to that. Here's a look at my matrix for the managing finance exam that I spoke about before. Based on the compact pack, you will see the seven different topics starting with the balance sheet and within that there is a structure starting with introduction. This is where the acronym and the numbers come from. B for balance sheet is at the beginning of BIC FU and there are five points so this relates to the number five. 
In total, there are 48 points. And this is what I would like you to write in your exam as soon as you are allowed to start. Don't even look at the questions. Find a blank piece of paper and rewrite your matrix as best you can. At first, to just say the word introduction under the balance sheet does not mean very much. But because you have spent time creating the compact pack and also the revision pack, the word introduction should act as a trigger to what you have revised. In some ways your work is complete when you have a revision pack, a compact pack and a matrix. However, if you have enough time, I would also like you to create a nutshell pack. And as you can see, this copies core information from the compact pack, no more than a few pages long, has a bullet point structure, try not to add anything new and the same rules apply to what to make bold, font and printing etc. And again, the nutshell pack is not to replace the revision or compact pack. Again, I'm not going to show you what a nutshell pack looks like because essentially it is a condensed compact pack taking up no more than say 10 pages. Something else that I find useful for revising are dictaphones. Once you are happy with the compact pack, go ahead and record yourself reading it out loud. This allows you to listen to your revision notes on the train, in the car or walking to the shop. So in terms of a checklist, the first thing that I would like you to do is go away and produce a revision pack of the topics you think you are going to be examined on. Once you have done this, go ahead and compact this revision pack. Reword things, delete things, change the structure. The bottom line is here you want to reduce the number of pages. Once you have done this and you are happy, you can then go ahead and create your matrix. Finally, if you have enough time, you can create a nutshell pack of what is included in the compact pack. So each of your exams potentially has four documents, a revision pack, a compact pack, a nutshell pack and a matrix. The higher up this list you go should mean a reduction in size and also the length of time it takes to run through. What I mean by run through is reading because once a pack or the matrix is complete, it is then up to you to read it and read it and read it and read it. What this means is a lot of hard work, dedication, sacrifice, tears and all that kind of stuff. If it means not seeing your friends or going out or giving up the PlayStation, Xbox, whatever you do, then so be it. Because an exam is just a moment in time. You can pick all that other stuff up after your exam is finished because I'm pretty sure they will still be there. So good luck, but I'm sure you'll be fine. I'd like to hear how you get on, so come back to the video and leave a comment or send me a message. Hopefully I've given you some new ideas when it comes to revising, even if you just take on board one little part of what I've spoken about, that'll do for me. So that's all from me now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.